Okay. Crisis Care is a childcare facility that caters to children with special needs. We believe that because a child has special needs does not mean that they should be limited in their experiences, what they can do or what they cannot do. So we try to give them as much exposure as any regular child would have. Um, we try we do functional academics. So yes, we do like math and English, but it might take us to the supermarket. It might take us outdoors. We work with autistics, um, Down syndrome, a number of special needs persons, but we also do student-led learning. So what their interest is, we would try to support them in that area because not everybody can sit down at a table and cheer and do English and math and, and chemistry, whereas some of us need to do more hands-on. A parent has a child and they're really, somebody, the doctor or so will say that your child is special needs, autistic, Down syndrome, whatever condition. I realized that the parents were like, what is this? What does it mean? How, what do I do from here? So we try to find support for the, the child. So whereas a regular child, you go to school, you can join the PTA or different groups or associations to help out parents. The reality special needs community did not have that. So we wanted to su support these persons. So that's one of the areas that the business went into. And then because of that, we had to continuously be growing. How can we adapt our training? So we started out with autistic, but then you realize you might have more Down syndrome persons coming in that we needed to adapt and adjust for Down syndrome persons. And because they're all special needs, most schools will have only special needs children. However, they need to be integrated because in the real world, you will be interacting with regular people as well. So we need them to work on social skills is one of our major things, things that we take for granted. I can't remember anybody teaching me how to use a scissors. We just know you take a scissors one day, you start just cutting out everything, your parents getting mad. But with these children, we have to actually show them how to open and close and open and close. So we work on those social skills, communication, um, not only verbal, but we learn sign language. A lot of students here have learn Spanish and different languages. So we support them in that. So I would say we have to be adapting our training, adapting our methods in terms of what we do and continuously be educating and we work along with the ministry to get persons assessed and who can be integrated back to mainstream society and schooling. We would then send them out. Most definitely, most definitely. I always had a love and a passion for children and I'm the first grand, first great grand, so I watch my cousins babysitting, doing the hair, and then I'm the one that when it have like school fairs and autism, like bringing up all the children in the neighborhood and taking them out. Um, it took me a while to figure it out. I started doing like nursing, and I realized like I can't give the cute little baby this little injection and the crying. And then, then I did um, some flight attendant, and I was like, I want to be doing like, children. I was like, okay, I enjoy your trip. But then I realized I didn't get to really interact or have the impact that I really wanted to do. So while at university here on um, Cave Hill campus, they had a seed program and it took you through like a series of workshops from business registration, business mar market research, financing, those sort of things. Then you realize we had to find a niche. So I started out with daycare. And then I realized that for some reason, like when I interact with children, I was able to realize like when children weren't meeting their developmental objectives. And then I branched off and made my niche special needs because I found that there was nobody, especially in Barbados and Caribbean, advocating for special needs. And then say I have grandparents who are Trinidadians. When I come every Christmas, I also go to the Princess Elizabeth Center to help out when I am there. Most entrepreneurs are afraid to communicate and explain their idea. My thing is like, because I have went through the struggle and I see other people wanting to start a business, I am, um, I try to help. So I do a lot of give back and um, mentoring because it's really important then you can help somebody they don't have to struggle because you actually struggle but you know what to do so you can advise them and in advising them even if they have a business similar to yours i am somebody could be watching this instagram live and want to do a special needs school but at the end of the day 
they still have to make it their own. It has to be unique to them. You have to provide their own level of service. Their target customers might not be mine. So we are um, entrepreneurs when they know starting especially are really scared to let people know what their ideas are. And then because of that, they limit themselves in terms of getting funding. One of the major things for a startup business is getting funding. So for me, I did a lot of competitions where I gained a lot of grants and support where I didn't have to take loans to purchase, like say, equipment and resources that I would need to start the school. So we need to be able to communicate. Yes, you have your idea, but you have to know how much you can share then how to speak i was really shy and now i joined to us masters and now i can pitch my business and see well explain to anybody who's interested what my business is so that i can get the support that i need not only for me and my business but for the students in which i care for passion i think passion is the major thing when you're working and you're just doing it for doing it there, doing it for the money. Oh my goodness. And the money's not there. You'd be like, oh, why am I in this? But when you something that you passionate about or so it you have that constant drive. I'm the person that when I go into a supermarket and I see a child, I say, hey them, how are you? And my mom is like, You can't see these children when you see children. So it was always something that was a part of me. So if you're finding or starting a business and it's something that is in green or something that is, you always was passionate or, or about for me it will be easier when you're working for somebody nine to five i love a lot five o'clock i'm finished but as an entrepreneur you will realize that after working hours you're still pushing but what is what is making you continue because you're doing it for the love so when you're doing it for the love that is one of your biggest motivation for me i have a really strong family and foundation like my mom would tell you everything like chris is always an entrepreneur when I want to travel to Trinidad, and she's like, I can't go to Trinidad this year. It's all right, don't worry about that. I go to school and I sell my snacks. And I save everything. Mm -hmm. And then, like, she was still saying me, but she's like, You are really, I was like, I am determined. And that was always me. If I want something, I'm going to go after it. No does not mean you have to accept no. I, when I hear no, I want to know why, so that I can work on it. So if you say no because there's not enough money, no problem, I can help get, I can find a way to get the money. If you said no, because I don't have enough qualifications, that's okay. I am going to go and study and I'm going to get these qualifications. If you said no, because you don't have, I am going to work on it. So don't just take no for no sake, but take the no and find the reason behind it so that you can work towards it. I think they go hand in hand. Because something did not work out in the first time does not mean that you're a failure. It just means that something didn't go as planned. But you can still be successful as, in that, as I said, by taking this no and turning it into a yes by adapting or adjusting what you have to do. And failure is also, my mom is a strong believer in something called life lessons. Like, if you walk and you hit your foot on the table, was your life lesson in that? And I'm like, life lesson in hitting it all? But now I am, as I get older, I realize it's really important because it teaches you to not just look at the things as half empty, but it is also half full. So try to think. Sometimes you have to take a minute, go through your feelings, breathe in the outcome to 10, whatever you need to do. And then when you think back about it, you realize that, okay, you know what? A, B, C could have gone differently or what I can do to change it. So success and failure to me are two very important and integral things in an entrepreneur growing in your business because you need to, you, if you're always being successful, you don't have any obstacles in your way, something is wrong. Something is definitely yeah. wrong. So when you see these little obstacles and you overcome them, to me, that's the best feeling in the world to know that you believe in people back there thought that I couldn't do it. Look at them now. Reacting, I would say, is emotional state. So, for time you see something, it's the first, I would say, natural thing. However, we have to learn to control our feelings and uh, how we feel about things and our expressions so that we can take the same time, count to 10, breathe, whatever, and then respond. When you respond, 
you use more reasoning and you use use more thought process you think about it and you try to look at it from different perspectives i'm not saying that you can always agree with it but when you try to do it and put yourself in other people's shoes sometimes you realize like it's not that they are being silly is that they honestly just not don't know better or they are um uneducated and that's a lot of things that we come across in special needs when person see special needs what she going with them children in the road but then it's that they don't understand them it's just that they do things differently but they are they're just like everybody else make I do it every year it started January do a bit of vision board and we do make two new alliances um gain new students obviously got to keep the school going mentor one person I try to mentor a new entrepreneur um also to give back right because a lot of persons don't are not able to support their special needs child because they'll have they need special school they need special therapy speech therapy occupational therapy physical therapy so then i would take it to take in one or two students whom i would do it for free pretty much and then i expand to support other people in terms of expanding my knowledge base now that we are virtual thanks to covid to see how i can help persons outside of barbados even the region support can be okay you have an idea and like i'm always having ideas i'm like how can i do my online classes how can i do this that you need a good support system cuz the crisis stopping and then you also need to say yeah that's like a real good idea you know you know i know somebody so support is not always to agree with you but to also let you know that like, you need to stop to be really honest with you sometimes we only look for people to agree with what we're saying but sometimes having somebody to be brutally honest with you can be just as beneficial support is obviously everybody's going to say financially to get money however i notice like i don't ask for funding for my business i ask for items so if i add, i need my students when they come in they don't have to bring stationery no pencils no books no crayons because then i can reach out to business places or i have a program where people are traveling to barbados they can bring in at least a pack of pencils from whether the us england or wherever and donate it to the school So that is support. Support could be tangible items and not always necessarily monetary, and I find that that works a lot better, especially when people feel that they give you this money and they don't know what you're doing with it. So I do that answer laptops, answer tab be specific and when you're specific with what you want, I find people are a little bit more eager to assist you because they know that you know what you need and not that you're just hoping to get some money and don't know they don't know what you're going to do with it. So I tend to do that support in terms of spiritually. I feel sometimes it's just feel like these negative forces or energies trying to get your business and like there are times like why do I do this? Why? But then when you have that centering and that I don't know mindful you you kind of feel at peace and know that I didn't give up this job that I was making five thousand dollars a month to come and sit down here and only get two thousand. When you have that, and you know, to me, that's like that's very important. Be the best that you can be in your area. If I'm into special needs, and I believe that. You're not going to know everything, but as you come, you keep continuously like upgrading, educating, learning about it so that when somebody wants to know something, oh dear, I got a special needs child or my cousin got a special needs child, um, but we don't know what it's mean. Where do I go? The first thing they should think about is Chrissy Scare. Mm-hmm. If you're a carpenter, know all the wood, know all the tools, know what you're doing and be passionate about it and genuine people know when you're genuine and they are more willing to engage with you in terms of working with you or supporting you when they know that you are genuinely doing something you love passionate about it and it's not just about the money 
there are times where you can feel like you're operating at a loss, but you might lose on one hand and gain 10 more on the other hand. 